This painting is called Death Do Us Part. The woman in this painting appears to utterly disregard the suffering of the man kneeling on the ground beside her. Again, we see the recurrence of a dark tunnel, with an ominous figure lurking in the shadows. It seems as though Ackerman is attempting to recreate a moment in his childhood with undertones of rape and suffering. Note the position of the man in this painting. He is vulnerable, weak, and exposed. Is this how Ackerman himself felt at the time? Cleansing of a soul. For the first time in Ackerman's work, a woman is depicted in a seductive manner. She floats on the canvas, her red cloak rippling in the wind, in contrast to the dead calm of the background. Red, representing passion and seduction, dominates the foreground, but is surrounded by ominous tones of dark purples, grays, and blacks, the colors of death. The woman's eyes are missing, perhaps representing increasing confusion and anger towards the women in his life. Bridge over troubled water. The woman in the foreground seems troubled and stares directly at us, seemingly unaware of the turmoil surrounding her. The vast and tumultuous sky, usually representative of freedom and openness, instead feels oppressive and looms eerily over the landscape. Is this Mark trying to get back at his mother? This painting is called Streets of Prague. Ackerman only lived in Prague for a few years. We can see the recurrence of a dark alleyway. Look at the colors in this painting. It's almost as if the walls are bruised and battered. Clearly Ackerman had a very negative view of the city. A sinner's pardon. The woman depicted here is clearly in a vulnerable and submissive position. She clutches herself as she struggles to achieve forgiveness. Perhaps one might see this as Ackerman's vision of how his mother should have asked for forgiveness for failing to protect him. The first one is called Abandoned. To the right, you can see a woman lying down, drunk, seemingly unaware of her surroundings. In the center of the picture are two eyes, eerily cutting through the darkness. We know that Mark Ackerman was abused by his father and felt that his mother who knew what was happening, stayed passive and let the abuse continue. This is mirrored in the painting where the woman depicted seems unwilling to react to the approaching danger. This one is called The Pupil. The title suggests that Mark connected with the subject of this painting. Although trapped in his own prison, Ackerman was able to find escape through his pupil, represented by the light reflecting through the window onto the subject. He is using this man to escape from his own prison. The title is Mindless. This man is literally mindless. Note the stitches on his forehead where he was presumably lobotomized. This represents Mark's worst nightmare, being trapped in a prison of both body and mind. Although standing in a corner surrounded by darkness, an open window sheds light onto the scene. In a cruel irony, however, the subject is unaware of this window to freedom and remains a prisoner. Ah, Beatrice. The woman depicted here, a nurse, seems to represent Mark's ideal woman, and perhaps she was. Attentive, loving, and seductive, she is surrounded by angelic hues of white. Her skin tone is rich and alive, in contrast to his earlier works. This one is called Dr. Hyde and is the first in his L.A. series. We know that Ackerman was committed to a mental hospital in the 30s. The man in this painting represents Mark's psychiatrist. It is a caricature of a dishonest man whose gaze is masked behind thick glasses. The painting has an air of condescension. Look at his smile. He looks like the village idiot. It is obvious that Mark had no respect or admiration for this man. This painting is called Moonshine Traffic, his second painting in Chicago. One senses that Mark is comfortable here. The sun is rising, pushing out the darkness. Notice the warm oranges, yellows, and reds. Perhaps Mark is finally at peace and feels at home in Chicago. Uh, this one here is called Disturbed Sanctuary and is the first in his Chicago series. One of the unusual aspects of this painting 
is the perspective from which it is created. One feels as though Ackerman is an unwanted guest in the room, almost hiding behind the curtain. The woman shown in this painting appears blissfully unaware of him, or the darkness that surrounds her sanctuary of light. Mia, do you feel up for a few questions? Sure. Can you tell me, is this you in the picture? Yes, it is. Where and when was it taken? I don't remember anyone taking a picture of me at that party. It was a rave in an abandoned warehouse somewhere. It was a few weeks ago. Who were you with? I, I was with... Sorry, Mia. Stephanie was with you. Yes. How did you meet Stephanie? I met her at work. So you, Cynthia, and Stephanie worked at the club? Yes. Who's the fourth girl? I don't know her real name. She was known as Queen of Secrets. The rule was never to give our real names to the clients or to the staff. But me, Steph, and Cynthia didn't respect the rule. We often partied. We got pretty close. But she respected the rule and never mixed with us. You were Lady Temptation. Yes, and Steph was Baroness of Blood and Cynthia Mistress of Pain. What went on at the club? Well, Queen of Secrets would host the clients in the room with four statues. The clients would change their clothes. Change their clothes? Yes. They would put on Victorian-style cloaks with top hats, and they would wear masks. Masks? Yes, it was a rule never to know their true identity. These men were probably rich and powerful. It was to prevent us girls from blackmailing the clients. Plus, it heightened their experience with all the role-playing possibilities. It put them at ease to know that we didn't know them. The money was absolutely insane. Thanks, Mia. I want you to stay with Richard for a while, because I might have more questions for you. Is that all right with you? It's no problem. Do you have any more information about Mark Ackerman? All I have is a book that the Department of Fine Arts printed. May I have a copy? Sure, honey. It's on the presentation stand in the center of the exhibition. Why the sudden interest? It has something to do with my case. What? In what way? The killer left two messages at two of the crime scenes. Disturbed Sanctuary and a sinner's pardon were written on the walls. I didn't know what they meant until now. You mean the killer knows about Mark Ackerman? Yes. That seems unlikely. Ackerman's pretty much unknown. This is the first time he's going to be exposed to the public. 
That's why you have to give me a list of all the people who sold you the paintings and a list of the people from the Fine Arts Department who are involved in this project. Can you do that for me? Sure, but it'll take time. Thanks. See you later. Okay, I'll go work on that list. Claire? What are you doing here? Why do I have the feeling I just caught you with your hand in the cookie jar? I just came up here to get some blank report sheets. I'm all out downstairs, and there you are. Claire, what's your level of clearance? Level two. Oh no. Please don't tell me you were trying to find files using my name. Oh, I found them. I just can't access them. It's level four clearance only. Oh, I'd love to read them. Don't tell me you have a lead. Actually, I might have one, yes, but I won't go into details just yet. I've been taught to never give any details before you have all the facts. Oh, really? Who's the idiot that taught you that? You did at Quantico. Remember? Yes, I remember. Anyways, I really need to get my hands on those files. Clearance 4, huh? I know one person who has that level of clearance. Todd. We never had this conversation, and I certainly never said that you could try the computer in his office instead of trying to get me in trouble. Victoria? Uh-oh. You never call me Victoria unless it's serious. You usually cut corners, I know, but why do something that might actually cost you your job? Because I feel responsible for Stephanie's death. Okay, now how is that possible? When I chased our murderer on the rooftop, I had a chance to take him out and I didn't. Why? Did you freeze? I know that happens sometimes, even to the best. I'm sorry, but that sounded like a male impotent speech. Victoria, I'm being serious. I froze, sort of. I was hanging over the ledge. Victoria, I can't believe we're having this conversation. That's not a shot, and you know it. How is your falling to your death any good for the case? 
thanks for the tip. Oh, and we never had this conversation. We better not have had this conversation. Never mind. Well, good luck, sweetie. And when you get the final facts, make sure you think of me and share. Of course I will. Thanks for being you. The boss's office. It's locked, of course. Hey, do you think I could borrow those keys? Over my dead body, senorita! I need those keys. I have to find a way to distract him. I'm sorry, but I made a terrible mess at the coffee machine. Oh, that machine is so stupid! Damn, it's password locked. I need to go directly to the archives downstairs. It's a print scanner. I need one of Todd's prints. This will do nicely for prints.
door's locked. It leads to the archives room security corridor. The security panel for this door must be on the other side. This door leads to the bomb squad room. It's electronically locked. Maybe if I jolt the circuits, it will open. Two months ago, and those signs still piss me off. M16A1 assault rifle with forward assist and a birdcage flash suppressor holds a 20 round mag. The boys in SWAT have all the fun. Find a way to make the laser beams visible, or else I won't be able to get through with the robot. No way I'll walk blindly through a field of deadly lasers.
documents my grandfather stole. I wonder if we have them somewhere. McPherson! McPherson, you have a lot of explaining to do. So what now, Browning? Don't bullshit me, McPherson. You know you're not allowed down here. Listen, I'm actually getting things done as opposed to sitting on my ass and waiting for something to happen. Well, that's your job. It's to profile the killer. To try and guess his next move, not chasing murderers in dark alleys with a 4x4. You know, I think you've seen too many movies. Tell me something. Who's gonna pay for all the equipment you damaged down here? Oh, for fuck's sakes, just bill me, okay? I have no choice now but to suspend you. You'll have to justify your actions in front of the disciplinary committee. Actually, don't bother. I quit. Oh, that's just what I expected from you. A quitter. You're nothing but a little rich girl who, when she doesn't get things her way, just quits. Fuck you, Browning. You don't know me. Maybe, but I know you're not getting away with this. I think I am, or a certain list of names of senators and high officials will go public. A list of names belonging to a certain S and M club? Hey, wasn't your name on that list too? How dare you! Just stay clear of me, Browning, or the press will have a field day. Hey, are you married? You little bitch! That's little rich bitch to you, Browning. It sounds like Dad's catching some Z's. There's a lump here. I need something sharp to cut through, but I don't want to damage the painting.
living a nightmare. Edith's suffering had just ended, and mine was only beginning. I took to the streets, blinded by sorrow. Why couldn't I protect her? What if I hadn't taken the case? But Milena's sweet voice brought me back to reason. She suggested we hide somewhere, since the police were sure to be looking for me. Vladana's place was the safest spot, but we couldn't stay for long. We all had our reasons for leaving Prague. As for me, I wanted to get back at the bastard. We got out of the city on a small boat, and a couple of Roman's friends set us up with a ride to another town. From there, we took a train to Le Havre, France. We bought four tickets for New York City. America wasn't the country I had left behind. Poverty was at an all-time high, and the economy at an all-time low. We managed to get in through some of my connections. Then I got this in the mail. One article was about a series of murders in Chicago that were the same as the ones in Prague. I contacted Chicago authorities, but they wanted more proof. Even so, it was enough for them to confront Herbert Ackerman. He countered with an offer they couldn't refuse. Money, lots of it. Ackerman's name was safe, but they forced him to commit Mark to an institution. Fearing blame for the murders, I crept into the offices and stole any documents that might protect me. I found a full confession signed by Ackerman telling the story of his son. That bastard is in the loony bin where he deserves to be. I heard that they moved out west. Some years after, a cop from LA contacted me about a case. Strange murders of prostitutes, badly mutilated. I sent him what I could, but I told him I wasn't going near it. I wasn't going to sacrifice the one I loved again. Milan and I got married and settled down in Chicago. I went back to the ordinary missing persons and cheating husband cases. And gladly, too. Hello? Hi, sweetie, it's me. Hey, what's up? I answered the phone at your desk because the damn thing kept ringing. Anyways, this guy named Vaclav something was a little hysterical. He said that he heard a scream and some noises coming from his neighbor's apartment. I figured it might be important or you might know what he was talking about. Yes, I do, thanks. I'll check it out. 
Oh, did you find anything in the files you were looking to access? Yes, but not as breathtakingly revealing as I'd anticipated. But it's given me a new lead. I think I'm going to L.A. L.A.? Why L.A.? It'd be too long to explain, but I'll fill you in as soon as I get the chance. Before you leave, I hope. I'll try. Anyways, I gotta see what's wrong over at the campus. Okay, sweetie. You be careful. I always am. Bye. Bye. still be alive. Kolar didn't make it. Hey, that's Mia's purse. Now this might come in handy. Where did he take Mia? Think, Vic. Think! The messages he leaves behind. Of course, the paintings! Granddad was probably right. Maybe Ackerman had someone on the outside. 
That's what I'm going to find out when I go over there. This one was already copied by the killer. It was the fourth victim, Natalie Kenworth. She was found in the sewers. The killer depicted this painting already. Poor Stephanie. I don't think our killer took a plane ride to Prague. This is a murder portrait and our killer hasn't used it yet. That must be Frantiska, the fifth murder victim found under the bridge. That must be the Charles Bridge. I recognize the murdered Apollina. The killer hasn't used this portrait. That must be the Vltava River. This red drape was floating in the water next to her. Apollina's eyes were carved out by the killer. I hope she was dead at the time. That's Ackerman's masterpiece. As he once said to my granddad, I don't think our killer has gone as far in his sick, twisted game yet. Disturbed Sanctuary. We've seen this one already. Cynthia Woods, our fifth victim. Another one from the Chicago series. That's probably in the harbor. One of Ackerman's LA series. Probably like Richard said, that was Mark's doctor. Probably from the Mental Institute in LA. Another one from the L.A. series. Nothing I can see in it that'd lead me anywhere in Chicago. I can use Richard's computer to help me find the possible location. That's it. That's got to be it.
heard that you were released from the hospital. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Did they find the body? No, not yet. They're still dragging the riverbed and diving. Damn. I know how you feel. I want closure too. I got my tickets for LA. You still think you're gonna find answers over there? You got him, sweetie. It's over. Not for me. Claire, I'm gonna have to let you go. I'm gonna rest for a while. Okay, I'll drop by later and see how you're doing. Okay, bye.